Ready to do it and then go knock out and ace the quiz. Yep. 110 or 120. I don't remember how many questions are on here, but occasionally, I don't know if I've done it in this class, I will just, you know, get a wild hair and give you guys 12 questions. No, I really. I don't know. It has happened. I mean, maybe not for your, your the U.S. class. I don't. I don't know. I don't even hardly know where, like, what class I'm in. Sometimes. Really, I noticed yeah. that when the U.S. hit class, you were like both cohort, like people from cohort one and cohort two were there, and I was. You didn't notice it. Until didn't realize it until class was over. Half yeah. Of the class, you realized I was wearing a suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is where I'm at in the semester. I don't know. <laughs> and maybe that's why nobody was there this morning. Maybe everybody else is just burnt out too. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so the three lectures for this quiz were the Russian Revolution lecture, the lecture on fascism and the beginnings of World War II, and the World War II, the end of World War II lecture. Mm -hmm. um, so in essence, it's sort of a three-part narrative, all one big process and one way of looking at it. And the, um, the first document that you will have looked at will be um, letters from a soldier and a peasant to, to Lenin and other Bolshevik leaders. Uh, what you want to know is I mean, what are they expressing in those letters? Remember, Lenin wanted to build support from among the Soviets, the little councils of farmers and of workers and of soldiers at the front. Well, here we're, we're hearing from a peasant farmer and a soldier who had been at the front, you know, what are they feeling now about the Bolsheviks who are becoming, of course, the Communist Party? What are they expressing? Um, you then get to read a selection from Mein Kampf, Hitler's book that I told you about that he writes while he's in prison for his failed coup attempt. And he writes this long, rambling, narcissistic, psycho, uh, fascist tome, but that lays out more or less the plan that he would attempt to implement when he does eventually become dictator. And you also get to hear, um, or you will get to read from part of his speech at uh, Nuremberg that he gives. And I just want you to be able to, to summarize, you know, briefly, what does he say? I mean, there's very brief selections. Like when you read from Candide and I was thinking in my mind, you'd have like a page or two and it was like one paragraph. I mean, it's not much. So it's not going to take much effort to just kind of summarize. What's Hitler trying to say here? Uh, what is he saying here that especially is important to him or to the growth of the Nazi movement? Then we get to hear from a German soldier and his uh, diary entries, the, the keeping a diary while they were advancing on the city of Stalingrad. And you remember that Stalingrad is one of those <coughs> three major cities that the German army was trying to capture, that it gets bogged down in winter and those become the great battles that begin to turn the tide of the war on the Eastern Front. And Stalingrad was a particularly deadly and, and ugly battle. But you get to hear from this soldier, like when they get to the city, and they've done nothing but win. And you get to hear from a little bit later once things have gone south. And so needless to say, you might notice the tenor of these diary entries uh, changes. So you just want to make note of that. And you get to hear from Heinrich Himmler. Um, Hitler himself is, is so prominent in our minds and our memory and our histories that I think sometimes we may tend to forget that there were a handful of other really despicable people <laughs> in the Nazi regime. Uh, and certainly Heinrich Himmler was, was one of those. And you'll get to hear uh, excerpts from a speech that he is giving to members of the SS, the elite forces of the German military. 
and uh, that's kind of Himmler on his home field, if you will. And so he's really speaking from the heart with no inhibitions. And you want to, what, what argument is Himmler making here? What's he trying to tell these truths? So any questions about that or of the documents before I move on? So lecture questions going back into the Russian Revolution lecture. Um, you should be able to differentiate the March Revolution from the October Revolution. You should be able to, to know that there are two that year and that it's the second one that brings the revolutionary socialists that are known as the Bolsheviks to power. And that ushers in the civil war that will eventually see the Bolsheviks win, become the Communist Party, and Russia become the Soviet Union. But you should also be able to tell me what happened in that March Revolution. Who came to power in the March Revolution? What do they stand for? Because it was not initially the revolutionary socialists under Lenin who came to power that year. That's not until later in the fall when they overthrow it the provisional government established in March. Um, moving forward in that lecture, I had a whole slide where I laid out sort of, in my view as a historian, this is what socialism is. This is especially what state socialism looks like. And in trying to lay that out, I sort of compared it with our understanding of, hey, this is these are elements of capitalism. And this is how that would look different if you had a state socialist system like you would have in the Soviet Union. And I want you to be able to, to tell me, um, you know, what is state socialism as it came to be practiced in the Soviet Union? How is that different from capitalism in, say, Britain or America? And this is going to be, and hopefully people have learned this lesson by this point in the semester, but probably not. And probably the ones that haven't aren't going to watch this video anyway. But this is one of those points where it's going to be blatant to me, like who is giving me back what I gave to you in lecture and who just Googles state socialism and clicks on whatever. Like I'm going to immediately recognize that you've done that. So, you know, don't do that. If you want to get it from the textbook, fine, but you know, if you quote directly, just make sure you uh, tribute. Similarly, I had a whole slide essentially dedicated to, hey, this is fascism. So you should be able to, from lecture, give me back, you know, some of, maybe not all of, but at least, you know, two, three, four, I mean, more than two, and, major aspects of fascism and don't just list them like some people did on the, that quiz where i'm like what are the underlying causes of the great war well industrialization nationalism imperialism okay can you explain each one just a little bit i'm gonna ask for an essay on each one but you know list the major characteristics of fascism that i discussed and you know give me a line or two about it Be able to explain to me what is fascism as I describe it. And if you're trying to jog your memory, which is not something you really have to do when you have an open note, an open book quiz, but if you were, you might think about the image of the fascists that I showed you and how that symbology kind of leads you to certain elements of what fascism is. How did Hitler come to power? I'm actually asking. Oh. Uh. He like joined up with the government. I'm not good with names, but like he joined up with someone else who was also leading like the fascist movement. Yeah, Mussolini. Yeah. Yeah, they came together and they. That's kind of where he learned about this is what fascism is. This is you know he saw how Mussolini rose to power, so he does have that model. But how has he actually become part of the German government? Um, now, Mussolini just 
more or less besieged the city of Rome and threatened the king. So that was a show of force. Hitler does it a little differently. So be able to go back through that lecture in your notes and see how exactly is it. And I remember I told you he does it in a certain way, but I, there was an asterisk there. Right. So he, they, they gain a majority of seats in the Reichstag, right? The parliament. But they also do that and they, they quote unquote win those elections by going around and beating people up and destroying newspapers and threatening people and preventing people from voting and so on. So he comes to power because his party gains a majority, but they do that through fraud and violence. And then, gradually from there, they basically hand over to him. They suspend the Constitution and uh, outlaw other parties and labor unions and destroy the power of the states and just gradually hand over to him what become dictatorial powers. Uh, Powers, Axis powers. I told you four major allies, three major Axis. You got to be able to, to tell me which ones they are. Which ones are they? Allied powers first. Britain. Britain. France. France. U.S. America. Eastern Front. Uh, yeah, you're Russia. Soviet Union. Al Axis powers. I mean, the, the other side in World War II, nobody's going to really step out on a limb and say Germany, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and his buddy was Japan. Italy, so Mussolini was Italy, right? And then Japan, yes. Speaking of the American war with Japan, you want to be able to explain to me what is the island hopping campaign? Another question in which will be very obvious to people that Google it and go to Wikipedia or History.com. Those of you that actually watch the lecture and see how I described the island hopping campaign, you might even say a word or two about how it unfolds in reality as opposed to just how it was conceived. And then finally, uh, Operation Overlord, the Allied invasion of Nazi-occupied France. Um, I kind of walked you through relatively briefly, hey, this is how that invasion unfolds. And here, here are the things that helped make that invasion ultimately successful. And you should be able to identify, you know, among the list, hey, this is one of the things that allied military brass or leadership were able to do or pull off that, you know, facilitated or made possible the taking of and the holding of the beach at Normandy. And that is it. Are there questions? Now that we're, I'm, Got this video that I'm going to put up. There are probably going to be people who ain't watched a damn thing, and they're going to be like, well, I'll just fast forward to the parts where he's talking about. Yeah, and then you get to the final, and you realize you uh, got, I don't know, like nine lectures you got to go back and watch in full because you're not going to, I'm not going to give you this, I'm not going to tell you every question on the final. So um, if anybody's thinking about doing that, I would caution you that you're creating a lot more work for yourself. Um, in a short amount of time if you want to be really successful on the final exam. Questions about anything? Complaints about the weather? I like it. Yeah, the weather's nice. Fair enough. It's supposed to rain today, I'm just saying. My cloudy, windy is my favorite.